Hello. We were studying the story of the discovery of the structure of an atom. And in the timeline as it was following, we've reached the Rutherford's model of an atom. Now, before we move to the next model of atom, which is the Bohr's atomic model, it is important to know what all was going on in the scientific world, which led Bohr to propose his next model. There were a lot of things which were being discovered. There was a lot that was happening in the scientific world. For example, in 1895, we know that J.J. Thompson had given his model of an atom, which was the plum pudding model, and he'd carried out the cathode ray experiment and had established the existence of the negatively charged particles. And then we know about the positive uh, proton and the neutron being discovered. In 1895, a scientist, Wilhelm Röntgen, he used the same cathode ray tube and he passed a uh, high voltage current under the same conditions and he found that while cathode rays were being produced, simultaneously there was another radiation being produced in the, uh, from the discharge tube which was going out of the discharge tube and it affected a fluorescent screen and was, it was illuminating a fluorescent screen even outside the, the discharge tube. And he found that whatever these rays were, he started studying more about them and he found that they had penetrating power too. They could penetrate through soft material, not through very hard stuff, but it had penetrating power. He said that whatever this ray is, let me call it an X, whatever it is, X ray. Till date, we call those rays X rays. Now, around the same time, there was a scientist called Henry Becquerel. What he did, he was working on uranium-235 and uh, radioactive uranium, he did not know it's radioactive because uh, radioactivity was not a known phenomenon then. So he just, it was a rare element and he was working on it. So it was the end of the day. So he decided that uh, he should not leave the uranium just outside because it might get pilfered. So he just took it in a black paper. He wrapped it in a black paper and he put it in his locker. Incidentally, the locker had a new a photographic film in it which he had also kept in his locker maybe uh, to use later so when he got back the next day or maybe after the weekend and he opened his locker and he took out the uranium he continued his work that he was doing and then one fine day he decided to use the photographic film and when he did he found that when he started using the photographic film was already exposed and there was no possibility for a new photographic film to be exposed. So what was it that could have caused the photographic film to be exposed? In the locker, the only thing that he had put besides the film was the uranium. And then he realized that uranium can give out radiations that are not visible to the human eye, but the photographic film can record those radiations. So he said that this phenomenon that certain substances spontaneously release uh, radiations and these radiations he called this phenomenon he called radioactivity. After Becquerel discovered radioactivity, Marie and Pierre Curie were a couple who worked further on it and then there were other scientists like Rutherford and Frederick Soddy who further uh, continued study on radioactivity. So now this was happening on one side and on the other side there were still more uh, discoveries and uh, experiments going on in other fields. J uh, Bohr, Niels Bohr, who proposed the next model of an atom, he was constantly keeping himself aware of the events that were happening and they were forming, they were creating impressions which would lead to his model later. There were two new findings which really led Bohr to um, devise his model of an atom. One was the dual character of electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation. That electromagnetic radiation has dual character means it has two characters. These dual characters, the two characters were that electromagnetic radiations are wave-like 
and they are particle like. Now, light is an electromagnetic radiation, we are aware of it. And scientists at that time were also aware about light being an electromagnetic radiation. So now, the discovery of electromagnetic magnetic radiations having a dual character and another thing was atomic spectra. When you exposed the atom and you um, recorded it, it would create impressions and you put light over it and the reflected light was recorded, it would create lines at certain positions in the, in the spectrum of light, in the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, in the uh, spectrum and these characteristic lines that you would get for every element was, uh, was the identity the photographic identity of that element so much so that even the light coming from the sun could be recorded it could be taken on a photographic film and the lines on the spectrum would disclose what elements are present in the sun it was so wonderful they had such characteristic lines but what was the reason for the atomic spectra once that was explained all the structure of atom and the arrangement of electrons started becoming clear to scientists. Now, in the next few videos, we will be studying about the dual nature of electromagnetic radiations and the atomic spectra in details and only then would we be able to understand how Niels Bohr proposed his model of an atom. James Maxwell was a scientist. We are now first going to study about when we say dual nature, it means that electromagnetic radiations have wave-like and particle-like nature. We are going to study these one by one. So first we'll study the wave nature of electromagnetic radiations. James Maxwell in 1870, he found that when a charged particle is under acceleration, it produces electric and magnetic fields alternatingly. It's producing an electric field and then it produces a magnetic field. It produces an electric field and then a magnetic field. So it alternatingly produces electric and magnetic fields. And Newton, by the way, had said that light is, um, is a radiation, an electromagnetic radiation, but it consists of particles and he called them the corpuscles. He said light is made up of corpuscles, that is particles. But in the 19th century, it was uh, found that light also has wave nature. So light is an electromagnetic radiation which has both wave nature and particle nature. Right now, we are going to fo focus on the wave nature of light. What is an electromagnetic radiation like? And when we say it has electro, electrical and magnetic fields, what is what does it mean let us assume that these are the three axes i hope you can see i'm using three pencils to explain the three axes to you they are you know the three axes are at right angles to each other yeah can you see these three pencils they are at right angles to each other you can call this the x-axis the x-axis okay the y-axis and the z-axis. The x-axis, the y-axis and the z-axis. Okay? Now, what happens in an electromagnetic radiation? It was found when the charged particle is vibrating. It produces an electric field. Let us assume the electric field is in this direction. That is, is along y-axis. So, a wave, you know, is a wave is like this. It has a crest, that is, it goes up and then it comes down, that's known as the trough, a crest and a trough. So since it is the electric field, let us assume is along the y-axis, it moves this way. And this is the plane in which it moves along the y-axis. At the same time, a magnetic field is created and the magnetic field is along the x-axis. So it is produced this way. But both the electric and the magnetic fields, although they are in these two directions, they are traveling along the third direction. They are traveling along the third direction. And this is the actual direction of propagation of the wave. 
electromagnetic radiations when charged particles move they produce electric fields the electric field in one direction the magnetic field in the other direction but the propagation of wave takes place perpendicular to both of these directions so the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and the direction of propagation of wave is perpendicular to both of these that was how electromagnetic radiations the wave nature was imagined and how you can have two different fields and yet the wave is the radiation is one very interesting now what were the characteristics of these he said that they are perpendicular the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other another thing he said was that these radiations that is electromagnetic radiations they do not require a medium to travel like sound waves like if you throw a pebble in water the water moves but that's a medium so it did not the electromagnetic radiations did not require a medium that is why the light from the sun can travel through vacuum and come to us into the earth's atmosphere he said they require no medium and electromagnetic radiations he said can be uh, defined in terms of a few measurements what were these measurements he said they were wavelength and frequency mainly there's a wave number too but wavelength and frequency they are used to define the electromagnetic radiation so he said and based on this you have an electromagnetic spectrum an entire range of frequencies and wavelengths that are possible for electromagnetic radiations this was known as the electromagnetic spectrum 